In just two days, I'm going to be mixing a show at a football stadium. I got to cover the entire home seating area with just six boxes of HDL 6A line array speakers. That's 18,200 square feet of bleachers. I need to make sure that every word is crystal clear. So it's a pretty fun challenge. This is going to be part one of showing you the planning for the show. And next week, I'll come back showing you, hey, here's what happened. Here are the challenges I came up against and did it work. I'm going to be using my audio mass survival spreadsheet today to do some calculations and help us out. So make sure and grab that at producedbymkc.com slash audio toolkit. You'll find it in there or you can snag it at the link below. All right, let's jump in to see if I can make six boxes cover a huge home seating area. So let's gather some data and put together a plan. I've got Google Maps pulled up. If you right click and hit measure distance, I can go from here to here. And that is 200 feet. And let me clear it. And I go from the front bleacher all the way up to the back bleacher. That is 89 feet. We'll round up to 90. So I have a 200 by 90, which is 18,000 square feet to cover. We have to both figure out, do we have, with three boxes, can we get enough angles to spread out? And because uh, from looking from here, I don't know high, how high those back stands go. And are the boxes wide enough to be able to divide and conquer? Um, I do know that if I take, if I round that, 90 number up to 100 and I do two, 100 by 100 and then 100 by 100, that's basically a square. So no speaker can get wide enough that early to cover a square. So we're going to have to back the speakers up to give it time to spread out and do that. So even with a super wide speaker, if I have it right here, that means it's going to have to get super wide very early to make sure that those front speakers, uh, those front rows are covered. But if I'm back here, it doesn't have to have quite as wide of an angle to do it. So I know that I'm stuck with a 100 degree coverage angle from the speakers I have, which are RCF HDL 6As. It's a 100 degree, 100 degree wide by 10 degree at its maximum splay. So I need to figure out how far do we need to back these speakers up to be able to cover this audience. So that's what we're have to figure out in our design. And I already know my horizontal placement because I need to have these shooting right through the middle. So it's very convenient to have a football he football field here. And that uh, basically the 32 yard line is more or less the middle right here. And then uh, I know they're on crank lifts. The maximum height is 25 feet, but with weather and wind, I can usually never get that high. So I'm going to say best case scenario, I'm going to be able to get my top box to 20 feet in the air. So that already determines my Z placement. So it's basically uh, already know X and then Y we need to figure out to see how long we need to give it to spread out. So that's the, the last thing we need to figure out there. So I've got Ease Focus 3 and I've drawn up more or less what's going on. So I was able to get some measurements of the stadium and the first row uh, is seven feet up and then it goes back 90 feet. And then the back yeah, the back is 35 feet tall. So I plugged in those measurements and that gave me uh, what the slope of what I need to cover. And so that slope um, puts the back row way up here and the front row here. And then now given that, I can put these receivers along the audience plane and this can show me this frequency response throughout it. And that helps give me great data for figuring out what's going on. So I was able to use Pixel Stick earlier. It's a phenomenal tool and I can basically measure pixels on the screen so I don't even have to get the exact measurements. But from the top box at 20 feet in the air to the back row versus the bottom box right here to the bottom row is a three to one distance ratio. So that tells me a few things is that I'm gonna have to have the top uh, cluster or elements, the composite elements work three times as hard to be able to throw and make things more even versus the bottom. You'll see here that I have, as far as my object list, I have a three box setup and then I have a six box setup. So my only fear with this setup after looking at coverage is maybe not quite enough SPL to really make this oomph and, and nice and loud if there's like a train going by. So if the production company had to run back to the shop, I know they got things in stacks of six. So it could add three more to each side and we'd be off to the races. So I'm going to step through first. I've got to make this show, excuse me, happen with three boxes. And then if we had the luxury of six, what would that look like? So 
The three boxes on the house left, let's look at its properties. So this doesn't have quite enough of a line length to really give us our separate elements of like, you know, two boxes, two boxes, two boxes. This is the Bob McCarthy approach. And I really um, enjoy his methodology. And so with just three, I chose to do, since we have a three to one distance ratio, I said that between the first and second box, I put three degrees, then multiply by, th by three is nine. And the closest angle I could get here to that is 10. So that is a three times more splay. So that is much less overlap between those two boxes. Therefore, I'm not getting as much energy coupling there. And so if I show the mapping of just one of those boxes, we can look at it from a horizontal perspective. Now I've, I've backed this up 50 feet and that is more than enough time to, for that to spread out. So if I uh, get rid of the mapping right here, we can see that the 100 degree spread of these boxes goes out and goes out and we have a nice bit of overlap to make that happen. I could play a little bit more with backing it closer, a little bit further back, but I settled in here on 50 feet. And how I was able to kind of figure out what's going on there, I can go to speaker coverage and put in 100 degrees and then gets me my lateral aspect ratio. And what that is, is 100 degree speaker, if it's throwing uh, 10 feet, I would then multiply that by the lateral aspect ratio, so 1.53, and that would tell me how wide it is across a flat surface because speaker coverage goes in this more, you know, snow cone shape, right? And so if it's throwing 10 feet, I'll multiply by 1.53, and that would give me a 15 foot spread. So I can go back to our design here, and I know this box throwing to the middle, I think it was about 75 feet. So 75 times 1.53 gives me, it's spreading out 114 feet, which gets me over the 200 foot mark if I multiply that by two, because remember we're subdividing half, half and half here. So if I go back and look at that coverage, if I subdivide half and half, that's a hundred feet wide. So I know if I give that box from a 50 foot, 75 foot throw to the middle, it's going to spread out more than that. So it's going to accurately cover it. And I can play with the bumping up 10 feet, bumping it back 10 feet and see if that overlaps can be too much. But I don't want to back this box up too much because if I only have three, I need all the SPL I can get to throw to the back. So as far as vertical aiming, I know I was able to get from the box splays three and 10. And then I chose to take the middle of that top element, excuse me, and aim it towards this back receiver right here. So I'm having the very middle of the overlap of that element, because that's where we're gonna be the highest SPL is and aim it there. So it feels wasteful to have this other box pointed way up here um, in the sky, but it is the overlap where I'm gonna get the most amount of throw. And then I needed to make sure that we had enough um, of a coverage angle that would get down here enough to that bottom box. So I can use pixel stick again, and I have it from this uh, top box all the way to the back is an upward angle of eight degrees. And if I drag this down here as a bottom of negative 10, so that Delta gives me 18 degrees of total splay. So just with the boxes themselves, the display angles is three and 10. And so that's 13 in and among the boxes. And then on the edges of the boxes, they're 10 degrees. So I get five and five. So I get 23 total. So we are overshooting some. And so I lose some, but let's go ahead and look at our receivers and verify that our frequency response is looking good and what things are from a SPL perspective. So if I hop over here to this tab, we're on our three box. And let's make it bigger. So one, two, three, four, five is, is going up the row. So one's the first row, five is the back row. And my goal is to get a less than 60 B spread front to back. And so I can make a little box here to help me out. I was saying hundred down here to 94. We'll make it a few octaves wide. And does everything fall within this box? And we get that little peak here at 8K on number two, but other than that, everything does. So I'm mainly looking at here from 1K to 8K, if I've wanted to go even tighter, 2K to 8K to really make sure things are falling within this, and it does. I know I can't do anything about uh, the low end rising this much, but it's just because those 
uh, front rows are closer to the sphere, spherical ways of the low frequencies, but I can do the most amount of control from 1K up here to 8K because that's where the waveguides um, of the high frequencies can actually have control. So I am happy with that to have a less than 6 dB uh, level variance front to back. Even a three to one distance ratio isn't too hard to overcome, but again, with just three boxes, I was a little nervous. What I do want to point out lastly here with this three box array is that my, uh, I'm assuming that these frequency responses are showing me peak SPL, but if I go here to the topmost peak at 4K and I drag this over, that's only showing 97 dB as peak SPL um, at that frequency. So I'm going to need to make sure and run things nice and hot. I might use the, the knobs on the back of the speakers to turn them all the way up to make sure I have enough head, you know, of, of a level increase in the air. And so just, I'm gonna need to gain up mics high. I might even use a limiter on my master output to protect peaks, but then gas the input, to give me more level. Um, so I'm aware of that. So if I X out of this, and let's look at coverage with just three boxes per side uh, from a horizontal perspective. And show mapping at 4K with a three octave look. And this looks great to me. If we look over here at our legend here, uh, red is 101, and even this looks blue and like, oh wow, it's down in the blue. Blue is down here at 95, so that's still less than 6 dB all the way around for the entire audience of 18,000 square feet with just three boxes in the air. So side view, we look at that here, three boxes, house left, just three boxes. Again, it looks weird because one's pointed way up above the audience, but you have to know how are the boxes going to couple and share their energy across. So this is working for me. So let's say they were like, hey, we're adding a band and we need things to pump. I definitely gonna need more boxes then. So now I'm gonna flip over to what do I do with six boxes? And it's very similar strategy. You, you'll see a common theme of making this top A element aimed through uh, number five. So these I'm doing three groups of two boxes. So two, two, two. And I only have a one degree splay because I want a lot of overlap to get it to throw far. And then this bottom box, the middle of it is going down to one. It's not quite the middle of that element, but it's getting close. And if we come over here and look at our total splay, um, just like Merlin Van Veen has advocated on his website, and I'll show a graphic here, uh, that I want the bottom element versus the top to have um, basically a minus 6 dB or a doubling of coverage ratio versus the top. So in this top element, I have two boxes at one degree, which totals up to two. In this bottom element, I have two boxes at five degrees, which gets me 10. So two to 10 is a 5X increase. And so if I have a three to one distance ratio, I'm shooting for a six X increase. So I could technically decrease this now to, I don't have a six, I have a seven. It might be a little bit too much. I could play around with that. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy with still the horizontal coverage. And let's look at things are looking like front to back from a frequency response perspective. I can immediately tell that the low end uh, where things start here and then slowly dive down. I usually like from 100 Hertz to 1K in a musical setting to up to a 10 dB of lift in spoken word or dialogue centric. So maybe three or six dB lift, but I'm able to get that much more here since I have more low end beef coming from the array. So I'm happy about that there. And then from 1K to 8K, I have much more consistency across uh, the frequency response and I have as much of deep dips and peaks and valleys there. So uh, I think I would be happier from an overall tonal uniformity perspective and SPL uniformity perspective with six boxes, but I think I can do the show with three. So I got this show in two days. We'll see what happens. We'll throw some boxes in the air, uh, but that is the comparison between them. Let me verify real quick that I got a 6 dB spread. So 102 to 96 is six decibels. I love this little screen drawing tool. And if I go from here from 1K, and uh, I go to the top of number two, that frequency response in here, most of it falls with, within that up here to 8K. I got a little bit of a dip here at number five, down here at 2K, just below by one dB. Not a huge deal, but overall though, I think from one stepping through two, three, four, five has a more even, uh, 
progression from front to back. So we can look at frequency response of number one, which is down, it should be the loudest, it's in the front, uh, but it is not. But from two, three, four, and five, we get a really nice even drop and step down in total uniformity. So I'll take that. The front row might not be the most even, but again, 80% of the audience from number two on back is really even. All right, let's wrap up. So what we learned is that three boxes can do the show. I'm going to be cognizant of the SPL needs, really gas the backs of the back of the boxes, really get a nice and hot gain structure so I could feed them single, uh, feed them an adequate amount of signal, then also do a lot of dynamics management on the front end with the sources to make sure I don't get super high peaks that are really pushing the boxes too much. This is going to be the most I've ever asked out of this particular box, the HDL 6As or 6-inch woofers, and having to throw from the top box all the way to the back is 145 feet. So uh, the most I've ever had them do is 110, and it was with six boxes and a much tighter uh, splay angle between the top. So we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be great. Um, I will report back next week with uh, what we encountered. Make sure and grab the Audio Mass Survival Spreadsheet that is at produced by mkc.com slash audio toolkit. There's a bunch of other great tools in there you can use, and you can also click the link below. My name is Michael Curtis. I love making things sound good. Appreciate you watching. I'll see you next week.